Previously, we had a look at what compound interest actually is. Today, we're going to have a look at the compound interest formula and how we use this formula to calculate the future value when interest is compounding yearly, half yearly, quarterly or monthly. So, let's begin. Here in front of me now is the compound interest formula where our FE is going to be the future value or the final value that you have. The PV is the present value or the amount that you've either borrowed or invested. The I is the interest rate and we always represent this as a decimal. The T is the time and we always represent this in years. And the N is something that's new to us from the simple interest formula as the number of times the interest is compounded each year. Now before we go any further, we're going to have a look at how we find what the N value is. If we want to find out what the N value equals, we need to calculate how often the interest is applied or the interest compounds inside a one year period. So when the interest is compounding yearly, this is saying that the interest is going to be applied once per year. So our N value here is going to be equal to 1. When it's compounding half yearly, it's going to be compounding every 6 months, which means that it's going to compound a total of twice, so our N value is equal to 2. When interest compounds quarterly, the interest is applied once every 3 months. Now, there's 12 months inside of a year, so that means the interest is applied or the interest compounds a total of four times each year. So our N value is equal to four. When the interest compounds monthly, it applies each month. Now there's 12 months in a year, so our N value is gonna be equal to 12. So now we know how to calculate the N value in our formula. Let's use this formula now with a question where it says, calculate the amount to be repaid after two years on a loan of $18,000 if the 16% interest per annum is compounded either annually or quarterly. Now whenever doing these problems, I like to start by identifying what information we have. So the future value, we're looking for that, so we don't have that. The present value, is equal to $18,000. The interest is equal to 16%. However, we need that as a decimal, so that's equal to 0 0.16. The time is equal to two years. And for the end value, because it's annually, it's gonna be equal to one. From here, we substitute our information into the formula. So we don't know what our future value is, so we leave that. Our present value is 18,000. That's gonna be multiplied by one plus our interest, which is 0 0.16, divided by N, which is gonna be one, to the power of T, which is gonna be two, times n, which is gonna be one. From here, you've got one of two options. You could simplify it down, or you could just simply get your calculator out and input that information like I have here. So our future value is equal to $24,220.80. So let's see how this compares when the interest is compounding quarterly. Now our information is all the same for this question except for our value of N. Now because the interest is compounding quarterly, our N is gonna be equal to four. So as before, let's substitute all the values back into our formula. Our future value, we don't know, so we leave it. Our present value is $18,000. That is gonna be multiplied by one, plus the interest, which is 0 0.16, divided by our N value of four, to the power of our T, which is two, 
multiplied by our n value of 4. Once again, you could simplify this down, or you could put it into the calculator like I have here, and the future value is going to be 24,000 six hundred and thirty four dollars and twenty four cents rounded to two decimal places now it's really important to understand here that this formula calculates the final value of the loan and not the interest that has accrued if you want to calculate the interest you need to take this final value and subtract the initial amount that you took out in the loan so to revise when using the compound interest formula in a question, begin by identifying the information that you have within that question. Once you've done that, substitute the values or the amounts back into the formula. You can then enter this into the calculator to find the final value after that period of time. Just remember, this formula only calculates the final value of the loan after that period of time. If you want to calculate the interest that has accrued, you need to subtract the present value or the starting amount from that final value. 